GPT-4 is here, and I think we're at the start of a revolution in AI-supported learning, which is very good if you want to learn to code. Let me show you why. In this video, I want to show you how you can use GPT-4 to learn to code, and I think you're going to be impressed by the results. You'll see how it can tailor a coding course just for you, you'll learn how to prompt it to get what you want, and you'll see how it can explain code that you don't understand. You'll also see how it came up with this tic-tac-toe game in seconds. We can't blame people who are using ChatGPT. It's not their fault. So one of the best ways of learning to code is to have a coding mentor. Wax on, wax off. And I want to show you how to use GPT-4 and GPT-3.5 as your own personal coding mentor. Let's do that now. Okay, so let's get started. I'm using ChatGPT here with the GPT-4 model, but if you want to follow along with 3.5, that'll be fine too. So the best thing to do when you're prompting ChatGPT, when you're asking it to do something for you, is to be as specific as you can. So instead of saying something like, teach me Python, it's better to give more details. So here I've put, I'm a beginner at learning Python. Act as my mentor. I want you to tell me how to learn Python, which topics I should focus on, and what methods will achieve the fastest results. I'm also a novice at using ChatGPT. Please guide me on that too. I want you to critique my prompts and tell me how to improve them. So let's have a look at the answer. And this is pretty good, okay? So start with the basics, dive into data structures, learn about file input and output, understand error handling with try accept blocks, and then it also gives some advice on how to use chat GPT effectively. So I would say as a first answer, this is pretty good. Now, depending on your use case, you might want to do something else. You might want to learn uh, Python for web development, or you might want to learn it for data science, in which case you would need to put that in the prompt and it will give you a slightly different answer. So ex you must ask it for exactly what you want. So how about a more specific question now? Let's ask it about decorators because they can be quite confusing. So here I've said, I don't understand decorators. Please explain them to me as you would to a high school student, use coding examples. And what we get is a fairly decent explanation of decorators pitched at the level that we want, explaining how they work. And actually it uses a really nice little analogy. Imagine you're in a high school play and your role requires you to wear a costume. The costume is like a decorator. It doesn't change who you are, but it adds something extra to your appearance. And we get some code which shows the input and output. One of the first times when you realize how difficult coding can be is when you're asked to do tic-tac-toe, because up until that point, you've usually just learned about variables and conditionals and loops and functions. And then all of a sudden you're asked to make tic-tac-toe and you think, how on earth is what I've been learning anything to do with making a game like tic-tac-toe? And that's when a mentor can come in really handy. And so what I've done is I've asked ChatGPT to act as a mentor in that situation. So I asked it here and I specifically asked it not to give me the answer, but I asked it to give me some advice on how to do it. And the advice is really good. So set up the game board, display the board, define the game loop, get player input, check for a win or draw, play again, optional. And then it gives some other advice. And that's just how you should break a problem down. So one of the more interesting things that you can do with GPT-4 is you can get it to explain code to you. And that's what I've done here. So I need to put my glasses on because I can't see the screen. Okay, so what I've done here is I have uh, copied and pasted a solution to one of the leak code problems. And it's just the balance parenthesis problem that checks to see whether the parentheses are in the right opening and closing order. But I haven't told it that and I've just copied copied and pasted the solution here, as you can see, and I've asked it to explain it to me. So here's the code, and here it says, this code defines a Python class named solution, which has a single method is valid. The purpose of this method is to determine if the given input string S contains a valid sequence of parentheses. So it's got it right. And then it gives a step-by-step -step explanation of the code which I think is pretty useful. So again, this is how GPT-4 can be a mentor for you. And not only does it explain it to you, but then it has uh, a few examples, it's tested it. So it tests here whether it's actually working. It does some test cases. 
Now I asked GPT-4 to create a tic-tac-toe game for me. Uh, here it is, write a graphical tic-tac-toe game in Python. Since we'd asked it to give advice on how to do it, I wanted to see what its tic-tac-toe was like, and I'll show you that in a second. Before I do, there are just a few last things I wanted to tell you. I've had quite a lot of fun asking it to create flashcards for me on any topic that you can think of, but remember, specific prompts are really good. Um, I was looking for some data sets, and I asked it to recommend where to go to look for data sets for doing data projects. That was a really good answer. It can write documentation for you as well. So you can put code in and it'll write documentation for that code. That's pretty good. And if you want to, it to create a learning schedule for you, it can do that too. Right, let's have a look at that tic-tac-toe game. So what I did was I said, write a graphical tic-tac-toe game in Python. And it gave me the code, which I just copied and pasted into a code editor. Let me run that for you. Now it's created a two player game. The next iteration could be one where the computer plays against you. Um, but you know, we've got something that works. And when you put in uh, a winning move, that ends the game. Let's see if we can do that now there. Wherever you are on your coding journey, the best place to get a deep understanding of the key concepts is brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. I've been using Brilliant for years to learn STEM subjects like AI and computer science, and it beats everything else. To learn something properly, you have to do it. It's the application of the knowledge where the learning takes place. And that's where Brilliant excels. Their interactive platform builds your analytical thinking skills by presenting you with problems and puzzles specifically designed to engage your curiosity and enhance your understanding. They have thousands of lessons with new lessons added monthly. Here's a question from the binary search section of the Algorithms Fundamentals course. You're using binary search to look for the number 88 in this array. That's this one here. Starting with a guessing interval of 1 to 15, you check A8 and find the value 19. That's this one here. What should the new guessing interval be? 1 to 7, no. 1 to 8, no. 8 to 15, no, it can't be that. 9 to 15, it looks like it could be that one because this is in here and that's over. Yep, 9 to 15, it's got to be that, right? Should we give it a go? We got it right. The platform's designed so that you can master topics in as little as 15 minutes a day. To get a free 30 day trial, go to brilliant.org forward slash Python programmer or just click on the link in the description. And the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.